Oh man, I'm feeling tired. I should get to bed early. I have a boat show to go to tomorrow. Hello, everyone. Welcome again. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. I'm I'm here to talk about my last day of wrestling for the week. Uh. Interesting week, to say the least. Uh, so much stuff going on. Oh, well. Fortunately, life does go on. You have to move forward. Always be progressing forward. Don't worry about the past. Ooh, yeah. The past is behind us. The future is yet to be. We live in the present. Yeah! As the Macho Man was so fond of saying... Macho man, macho man. Well, again, before I start the show, very typically, give us some shout outs and respond to stuff. Let's see here. Uh, Bobby Smith, you, sir, because of your comments, earned this briefcase boombox. X3DX. You, sir, because of your comments in the Discord, you, sir, got that six count out of the ring. Drinks water. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar.
Yo, mama! Like to respond to your question. Um, I think you left a comment. How do I join you in Discord? I am found at Wootube. Uh, see here. I wonder if I can pull it up. See here. Give me a second, folks. Technical difficulties. Oh, wait. There we go. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. See here. Um, I'll kind of spell it out for you. It's Tamina. T A I M A dot TV slash R slash Woo uh, spelled W O O O. So that's Tamina dot TV slash R <coughs> slash Woo. And I'm typically there kind of anytime there's wrestling shows going on. I'm the one, the only, well, Hobo, Hobo Tom. That's what I'm known as there. So let's see here. <coughs> and the cool thing about WooTube is that every so often during the commercials, they play things from the 80s, like they play Thomas the Train. Right now they're playing a clip from He-Man. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then Joey's life. You, sir. You told Nikki Cross to take it all off. Oh, yeah, and Joe Mama, um, last time you crawled out of here, now you're being told to walk out of here. But with all those shout outs and all the thank yous being sent out. And thank you guys very much for all your support. You know, this helps on, on, on YouTube because YouTube is sometimes evil. Well, sometimes they are good. You can just ask MXR. Um, I think he, to some degree, got satisfaction from whatever place was you know, blacklisting him. You know, once you start talking about piles of money, it's never not it's not necessarily good. Uh, so let's talk about some SmackDown first, at least. And then we're going to take a little break. This will be a two-part show. This will be my last show for the weekend until Monday. Wow. That is Martin Luther King Day. Probably put up a little tribute to Martin Luther King. Um, I already did my, my Rocky Johnson tribute. I'm not going to do it again. And uh, Dwayne Johnson, please accept what little condolences I have to offer to you. Uh, losing your father sucks. Just kind of read up a little bit more. It's kind of sudden. But this is the SmackDown Red Wine and Pizza Fridays. It used to be highlighted by Impact, but <laughs> Impact got banned from Twitch. Don't be like Impact, folks. In fact, don't necessarily be like Hobo Tom here. Be your own self. But it starts off, uh, Kane does a promo. The Firefly Funhouse interrupts Kane. And where's the Rambling Rabbit? Remember, Rambling Rabbit, Rabbit was killed last episode. You see him all patched up. That rambling rabbit, he's immortal. I think this is like the fourth time he's died. Because I can only die once. My cat has nine lives. But she's all cute and taking a nap in her bed waiting for me to go to sleep. Yeah, I might go to sleep early. Because I do have the boat show to go to tomorrow. Get some shopping done. Oh, I have to figure out if I want to get those shoes. I know I have to get this up from Bath and Body Works. 
my little wallflowers makes my bathroom smell good. Uh, what else do I need? Get some oh, booze. Need the rum. Where'd all the rum go? Actually, I have a pile of rum. I have more rum than most pirates wish they had. But again, so here, we have King giving a promo. Uh, Firefly Finals and drops Ryan Rambert again. He's, he's immortal. He's on an IV of carrot juice. <laughs> that almost harkens back to the Bugs Bunny days. Uh, then Daniel O'Brien jumps in because, again, lights go down. Fiend comes out from under the mat. And I guess under the mat is where hell is. I don't know. Every, every hellish creation from the WWE seems to arise from under the ring mat. I mean, and... Uh, Futurama, robot hell was at least in New Jersey. For what it's worth. Hey, at least New Jersey's famous for something. So again, we have uh, Daniel Bryan. He sees this. He's not going to let his friend gain the jumps. Daniel Bryan jumps the fiend and actually gets some hair. We have a Daniel Bryan promo. He's going to be in a strap match. Against the Fiend for the Royal Rumble, which I will be doing my review show for in two weeks. Because I have a weekend off. Well, not somewhat weekend off. I have to work on Sunday. Smart. Boat show. So fun as a boat show. So sad as a boat show, though. Oh, well. Uh, first match of the evening, we have Big E taking on John Morrison. Oh! Johnny Mundo! Oh, Johnny Mundo's back and he's still looking awesome. Uh, Johnny Mundo, if you've watched some of my previous shows, was in Lucha Underground. He also, also was Johnny Impact in Impact Wrestling. But Johnny Mundo is where I first really got exposed because I took some time off for, from uh, pro wrestling because it was just terrible. I think on WWE, every night they had Braun panties matches. It's fun to see it the first couple times when you get exposed, exposed, and exposed to it. Yeah. ECW was really escalating its violence to like near murder almost, especially with New Jack. I said, Whoa, I need a little break. So, Johnny Mundo, I saw him move to underground. I'm like, Whoa, this is like. Even better than RVD. And RVD got impact pen from Twitch somehow. At least I'm not banned on on YouTube. That's a good thing. Banned other places. But oh well. Uh, so with this match, Mundo looks awesome. He did that draping neck breaker off the ring apron. Oh, so good. Standing moonsault. Biggie did get his offense into the overhead belly to belly suplex. Uh, that super backdrop of, of Biggie is amazing. But I'll tell you what. Starship Pain is back! Oh, wow. Oh, this is even better than the five star frog splash. Starship Pain! Uh, he hit that on both Kofi Kingston and Biggie picked up the win. Again, nostalgia. Oh, it's a heck of a drug seeing John Morrison, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Impact, John Morrison, though, back in the WWE doing wrestling moves like only he, maybe a handful of others can. This was a surf and turf match. Then we had a recap of Robert Roode beating up. Of be getting beat up by Roman Reigns. And then now Roman Reigns, he's a part of the Uso Penitentiary. He was doing a promo with them. I, I, I want to say they are cousins. They're all really, A lot of wrestlers are related to each other, which is kind of weird. But, oh well. And uh, some wrestling families are also cursed, too. 
Like, I would never date Ashley Fleer, also known as Charlotte Flair. Only because I, th I know David Flair did a drug overdose. I would never date a Von Eric. They're just super cursed. Hearts are pretty up there and, and having bad luck. You know, there's a bunch of heart women that might be available. No, it's just a bad idea going to wars. Yeah, for some reason, like, old school wrestling families are, like, cursed. Tessa Blanchard. Whoa. I don't even want to go there. I knew one friend in college who liked that stuff. Not for me. Uh, Tessa likes it? Power to her. Every, everyone has their thing, I guess. I just very simply with my red wine. Again, what you can do if you have very simple pleasures. And again, remember my public service announcement. If you are going to enjoy some red wine, okay, well now. Do not drive. Just stay at home, play video games, make videos. Clean videos. Tranquilo. Pet your fuzzy kitty cat. Go to bed. And all's good. Do not drink and drive, folks. So that's, that's very bad. Again, I sat on a juror as a member of a DUI case. It was terrible. It's not fun. It was probably expensive for the people involved. So, don't. Uh, then we have the Usos. Taking on the Revival. Say yeah! Uh, they seem to be jobbing the Revival out pretty frequently. Uh, starts off, very classic wrestling match by the Revival. Again, uh, they pull the beard with one of the Usos. Again, if you're going to have that long beard, expect to have it pulled at some time. And then eventually, I think Jay Uso got the hot tag, the Revi Revival. They get smart. They know, hey, if you're going to run into me, I'm going to grab my partner. I'm going to stop all that momentum. Uh... Eventually, one of the Usos like barely got a dive to work. And I want to say Dawson just got pummeled and knocked out by one of the Usos. The Usos picked up their win. It was a good match. It was fun. It shows them getting back into things. Jimmy's learned, again, don't drink and drive. It's very bad, especially in Tampa, in your own hometown. Game. Uh, the Usos win, though, in a good quality cheeseburger match. Then the Revival give an interview, and somehow, in the background of the interview, Sasha gets jumped by Lacey Evans? Well, Lacey Evans is a face. She must have done something very dastardly. Or it says something not too nice. Too lazy Evans to earn that. Um, then we have uh, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Sonya's like, yeah, why are you so nice? Are you going to accompany me today? Oh, yeah, Otis can come with me. Hey, Mandy, I'm single too. But, oh, well. Hey, all the happiness to Mandy Rose and Otis Dozovich. Whatever happens, happens. Oh, well. I was never a Mandy Rose fan. I think I saw her wrestle a few times. She's okay. She's a... ah. P-H-A-T, booty, though. Then let's up to the match between Bailey and Lacey Evans. And, wow, Lacey Evans actually got pretty good. Um, There's always... Oh, yeah, there's always a macho man in the crowd. Because whatever wrestling event, there's always, some, there's always some wrestling fan dressed up as a macho man. Yes, I love Steve Harvey as well. Whatever. And John Morrison is the Friday night everything. John Morrison, 
Knight amazing, folks. But back to this match. Uh, Bailey taking on Lacey Evans again. Uh, Lacey Evans is a sliding drop kick. Lacey Evans is improving really good from when at least I first saw her. I told that story. I saw her actually at my gym here in Daytona Beach once. And I had no idea who she was. Saw her in the wrestling matches. Still had no idea who she was. Uh, then uh, Now we have Vicious Villain! Bailey! Because Bailey looks like a Romulan villain from a Star Trek movie. Not Star Wars. Star Trek, people. That's where the Romulans are from. The Klingons. And Terrans. And Orions. And slave, green-skinned slave women. Oh, wait. Yeah. That's old school Kirk, though. But, yeah. Bailey looks like a Romulan villain. And she acts like a Romulan villain. Uh, again, she does a heel fake injury to the knee. Boo, Bailey. Uh, Evans eventually got hung across the ropes, which is vicious. But then she hit the woman's right onto the Bailey, and she earned herself a SmackDown Women's Championship shot. Again, coming up for the Royal Rumble. So I have no idea who's going to be in the Women's Royal Rumble because there's not that many women there. Expect to see a lot of NXT call ups. Hopefully, for my preview show next week, I'll have some clue with what they're doing. But this was a fun. Fun match, though. Lacey Evans, again, she's improving. All I care about, I just wanted to be entertained. It was a good match. It wasn't botchy. I mean, like, you couldn't hear the spot, so at least they're keeping it someone in kayfabe. It was a cheeseburger match. Then Shroy D did a promo. Sheamus comes out, beats him up over it, destroys the... Coffee table at catering. No coffee for anyone tonight. Uh, Braun Strowman declares for the Rumble. And then Elias. I want to walk with Elias. WD, WWE stands for walk with Elias. Uh, again, he's the new chorus of SmackDown instead of having the Street Profits. I guess the Street Profits are just on Raw. Uh, again, this is all on via, via song until evil Sami Zayn appears. I wonder who's more evil. Evil Burt or evil Sami Zayn? Indeed. And this almost sets up <laughs> if this was an XC, it'd be El, El Vagabundo versus El Generico. Uh, eventually, Sami Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura, they beat up Elias. Braun comes in and makes a safe. I'll tell you what, for those of you that watch a lot of, probably way too much wrestling like I do, um, and if you follow Steven Larson, that IC belt, Intercontinental belt, the new one, doesn't that look a lot like the H Championship? Just saying. And then our Rocky Johnson tribute, again, I've already given my tribute. That sucks. You have to move on, though, sometimes. And then you have Alexa Bliss taking on Boo Sonya Deville. Boo! In fact, Sonya Deville, you make me drink my red wine. Oh, that's good. Uh, so this match, Heavy Machinery show up to the ring. Oh, there's going to be some dissension here, I think. I know what's going to happen. Again, when you've watched wrestling as long as I have, you kind of know what's going to happen. Everything old becomes new again. Those of you new watching it, oh, I never saw this happening. Yeah, I've seen it happen a couple times. So heavy Machinery show up to the ring because, again, uh, Manny Rose said, oh, well, if you're wrestling, can we also have Heavy Machinery there? And Sonya Deville said, yeah, whatever. So Alexa Bliss versus Boo Sonya Deville. I'm still upset that that they made my Princess Kimberly job to her. In fact, I have to make my Princess Kimberly for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. Kind of your standard match. Um, Sonya just kind of... Sonya did take a good handful of Lexus booty, though, during that pin. Sonya Deville does swing that way, too. 
But yeah, you never know. Uh, Bliss, again, she does get her offense in. So he gets a little bit of offense in. Uh, Manny Rose to the top. Nikki Rose, Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is the best, though. Nikki Cross, crazy Nikki Cross is the best. Knocks her down. And Manny Rose, oh, so gracefully falls into the waiting arms of, of Herman Otis. Otis is getting some sweet loving soon, folks. But unfortunately, this means Sonya Deville lost. <laughs> Yay, Alexa Bliss. Boo, Sonya Deville. Then we have the glorious promo. Robert Roode. And it starts off uh, Roman Reigns versus Robert Roode in a tables match. It's actually really fun. Um, it's really good back and forth. Robert Roode to be looks to be back from his suspension. Whatever bad thing he did. But again, it's good back and forth. They, they have their classic move set. Uh, then towards the end of the match, again, because it's a tables match, it's a no DQ match. Of course, uh, Baron Corbin shows up, gets involved. Dolph Ziggler super kicks Roman Reigns, so you look like they're going to put him through the announce table for a while. Then the Usos show up, or Usos show up. Uh, they actually double splash Ziggler through the table. That was impressive. Uh, Baron Corbin stun, and then ooh ah, uh, Rude Jets goes through said table that actually Reigns set up. So I wonder if the rule of tables is opposite in WWE. But this was actually a pretty fun match. Where tables match is a cheeseburger match. And that was SmackDown. Actually not as bad a show as it was, I think, last week. It, it improves. It builds up thanks to the Royal Rumble. It's just not a pile of hot garbage like Raw is sometimes. It's not a pile of hot, gar of hot garbage like it was last weekend. So with that, this is a little bit better show. This is a cheeseburger show. And now, let's take a little break. There we go. So let me. Always a little. Good. Well, let's talk about some 205 Live now because I managed to catch that fully after work. Uh, starts off Tyler Breeze taking on Arya Davari. Davari again, he's the blatant disrespect. He pulled off Tyler Breeze's pose lying on the top ropes. That tranquilo face. Arya Davari, listen, you're the heel jobber. Uh, then, Seer, there was the, the catch off the ropes, the inverted atomic drop. Oh, the atomic drop! One of my favorite moves of all times. If I was a wrestler, I would have the hobo choke, the hobo breaker, the pile driver, and always the atomic drop. Kick to the nuts, because well, I'm a hobo. So that's how hobos fight. They try and kick each other in, in the nether regions and incapacitates them. The headbutt would be another one on my move set. The bite, and that can be there's the forehead, ear, arm, hand, butt, or foot. Very basic. Like, I was never good at punching and wrestling. Good at chops. Forearms I'm good at. Knees, leg kicks. Body slam. I mean, kind of basic stuff. Headlocks. I would be the master of the headlock. Be the messiah of the headlocks. But enough about me, though. Uh, and Davari, you have the, uh, or a Tyler Brace, it's an inverted atomic drop. Uh, Davari, again, he did the hair pull. Very heelish. Uh, Davari, then he went flying out to the outside. He, he was going to go do a splash. 
Tyler Breeze stuck, pulled the rope down, low bridge him, he goes crashing on the floor. Breeze has a slingshot into the turnbuckle, the super model kick. Just not a super kick, it's a super model kick. Then, ouch! He got just tossed into the turnbuckle into the corner. Uh, Breeze eventually hits the, the beauty shot. Tyler Breeze wins. I really can't complain. Crowd seems dead. Listen, they just uh, withstood two hours of wrestling and probably about 20 minutes or actually, yeah, about half hour of main event. Because main event goes on first before SmackDown. Yeah, the way it works, it's taping. Yeah. You have, if you go to Raw, you get, I think you get like the two dark matches, which is main event. Then you get, of course, Raw. Then normally you get a dark match. At SmackDown, you get two more matches of like main event. Or sometimes one, it depends how, how long they are. SmackDown, 205 Live, and then a dark match. So sometimes the crowd just wants to see the dark match. Sometimes the dark match is really fun. Dark match is when the wrestlers really let go and, and say, we're just going to be human beings and, and watch what we can do. A lot of times. They show so much personality during the dark matches. Um, so again, Tyler Breeze, this one, this is a cheeseburger match. When they mentioned the 10 demands by, by Jack Gallagher, um, Jack Gallagher put on Twitter, or Instagram. Ah, I'm not on that stuff. I'm just happy to be on YouTube, honestly. Uh, he put on 10 demands for, for his return. One of which was to have a brand new mug full of brown Skittles. I appreciate that. The other one is that you have Jack Maverick dressed like a man, dressed like a GM. I can deal with that too. And then he had eight others. Because while my house is sleeping temperature, I have the windows open, cool down to the right degree. And my cat's making me sleepy. She's like staring at me. She's in a, curled up in her little bed down there. She is so cuddly. Uh, then we had Leo Rush taking on Sneel Singh. Of the Bali, 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 Bollywood boys. Uh, Rush, eventually he decides on both things. The speed of agility of Leo Rush is obviously the showcase of the match. He however does get distracted by the other Singh brothers. He's sent to the boats for his efforts. Uh, Sunil Singh again. Very, he controls. Does, again, very... You can see him tell the spots, too. Um... And then they, then the the Singh brothers tried probably one of the oldest tag team tricks in the book, the body switch, the body switch, the only team to really do this good with the Killer Bees, uh, Leaf and Lanny, Poffo, and I forget the other guy's name, but they would come out without masks. They had on uh, bumblebee like black and yellow trunks. They had about the same body style, but then sometimes during the match they would secretly switch. And the way they would do this is they would put on the, the the bumblebee masks. And then you couldn't tell who was who. And I think they did this a couple times with the Bella twin, but it wasn't as funny. Because the one would just go in and kind of cover up, and the other would be on the outside, and the ref would be like, huh? Wait a second. How'd she get? What, what are you doing? So, so this ref said, hey, I've seen the Killer Bees matches. Because the Sings tried this and said, you're not the right Sing. You get out of here. Kicked him out. The other Sing got in. Ate the final hour. This was definitely a smart referee for a change. They've watched their pro wrestling. Uh, Leo Rush gets the pin. Yeah, it's a Sing, bro. It's the Bollywood boys in a it was a ham sandwich of a match. <laughs> and then the Worlds Collide promo, because I guess that's this weekend. Nope. I'm not watching. Oh, it's, it's actually next weekend. 
it's a takeover instead of uh, the Royal Rumble. It's next Saturday. I'm not watching it. I have to go work the races. I have to work until YouTube monetizes me, which might be sooner than I think, which would be good. But you never know. Then I can like go buy an island in Belize, hire some like servant girls, and have guests over, have extravagant parties. Do my YouTube party from there. You never know. Uh, then we have when Worlds Collide promo, um, kind of some matches. Johnny Saints there. Johnny Saints does look like a proper headmaster of an English boarding school. Uh, he had uh, what's his face who was talking for him for the most part. We I mean, Travis Fangs versus the Brian Kendricks. Wait a second. Brian Kendricks isn't from part of the UK. Indeed. But also it's going to be LV, the luchador from Leeds, the Spanish-English superhero from the comic books, El Leguero, taking on Jordan Devlin, who I think is just the poor man Finn Balor. Poor man's Finn Balor. Balor, because that's what he looks like. Like, in trunks and everything. Weird. That's on wrestling, like, that's the poor man's Finn Balor. What's Finn Balor doing here under a different name? Poor man Finn Balor. Uh, then we had, oh, this was so fun to watch. Raul Mendoza! Oh, he moves up in the world. He used to do only the Florida house show, house show circuits. Now he's on 205 Live. I don't know. Is it better to be at a hot NXT live show at Daytona Beach? Or do you want to be on TV for 205 Live with the crowds like exhausted? I'd rather be on TV. Uh, he was taking on Isaiah Swerve Scott, who was actually formerly a uh, kill shot of Lucha Underground. Oh, I do need some. Pizza's kicking in, folks. And what's better, the hot house show crowd, the dead 205 live televised crowd? I don't know. Hard to tell sometimes. Uh, again, this was fun. A very technical match. I am a true believer of having technical matches. This was ultimately fun. Uh, if this was in Daytona Beach, the crowd would have been going absolutely bonkers for it. Again, this crowd was a little bit dead. They had probably at this point a good three hours of wrestling, and they just want to say, we want to see the dark match. So again, it was very fun, though. Uh, very technical. And finally, oh, Raul, Raul Mendoza does all this trippy stuff, and then a lot of counter-wrestling in this match until those chops. Woo! Uh, the Leaping Flatliner by Isaiah Swerve Scott, Mendoza, to the Santa Maria, which is a fisherman driver's. Then he does a, a double jump, Huracarana. How they land on that second rope when they do that double jump, Huracarana, or double jump anything is amazing. I have been up to the top rope. That's pretty daunting, folks. If you ask me, it's like, yep, you're going to jump, spin around, or jump and go from one, one side to the other. I'd be like, whoa, buddy. You don't know me. My body's not going to do that. I have some leg strength, folks, but I don't have that leg strength. I probably don't have the coronation either. Raul Mendoza has both. He does a springboard uh, acai moonsault off the ropes. Still one of them. If you ever see a, a really good acai moonsault, there's nothing else like it. I hate to say it, but that's so amazing. Uh, then there was, again, just flying Raul Fly. Raul Mendoza, thank you very much. We're not worthy to see you. We're not worthy to see you. We're not worthy to see you. Eventually, Isaiah Swerve Scott hit the house call and won the match. I'll say what, just because Raul Mendoza made up to the big leagues, and he better be in the, in the Royal Rumble. 
oh, he's in the Royal Rumble. I'm going absolutely bonkers. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be drop my pants and run around the ring in my underwear situation. But it's going to be me being really happy. Because Raul Mendoza, he deserves... He deserves the spotlight, if no one else. I'll tell you what, just because it's Raul Mendoza and he's in the spotlight, this is a surf and turf match. And that was some Friday night I like to thank everyone for watching. And please like, share, comment, subscribe. And again, next week's schedule is kind of pretty basic. Monday is Monday Night Raw. Tuesday is going to be... I don't know what Tuesday is going to be. Again, Rob Van Dam screwed up all of Impact Wrestling. Maybe for Impact Wrestling. Maybe for all of us. Again, go check out... Um, you can check out uh, What Culture, Steve Heron Larson, uh, WrestleMania, Cultaholic, and any other wrestling broadcast, and you can hear exactly what happened. Because I don't want to get banned from YouTube. That would be bad. But again, just see how Rob Van Dam, of oh, the whole effing show, Rob Van Dam got, got, got Impact banned from Twitch. Whoa. Again, you can check out one of those four sources. Uh, WrestleMania, Steve Aaron Larson, Cultaholic, and What Culture Pro Wrestling. Uh, there's probably other sources, I just forget who. Those are the ones I kind of listen to. And probably our uh, uh, Wrestle Talk with Ollie Davis. I haven't watched that in a while. And the whole effing show uh, with Kevin Scampoli. He probably has some things to say about that. Really? That's nothing compared to what they used to do on TV in, in like the 80s and 90s. Actually, it's exactly what they used to do on TV in the 80s and 90s. Especially the 90s. Yes, 90s. Oh, that's so good. But, yep. Uh, what else is there? That'd be a good weekend. So, so Tuesday we'll, we'll, we'll see, depending on impacts. Uh, Wednesday, I'll do my AEW review because I'll be home for that. Thursday, I'll have my Royal Rumble predictions. I'll have Dr. Tom over. He'll give his Royal Rumble predictions. He's the most learned individual along pro wrestling. Uh, Friday, I'll be probably SmackDown and 205 again. Saturday, I work. I'm going to watch with my son. That's okay. Work from midnight till, from, from noon till midnight. Then I'll talk about the Royal Rumble on Sunday. Until then, or next week, everyone have a good weekend. Bye!